The altar is not simply a monument that you make and say, okay, this is an altar. No. The altar is a meeting place between mortars and spirits. The altar is that place where man can meet with deity, with the one he's out. So witches, they know how to congregate, how to have meetings. And in the course of their meetings, they know how to legislate authority. You see, last week, while, while I was talking about the genesis of witchcraft, I emphasized so much on legislating authority. Now, I saw in one of our platforms, somebody asked, how do we truly legislate authority? What, are, what type of prayer point uh, involves legislating authority? Such persons, I'd like you to listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. How many of you know the magic word they call abracadabra? Uh, do you know abracadabra? Huh? Okay. How many of us know what they call bara? Huh? Abracadabra is an Aramaic word. It's not an evil word. But magicians have monopolized the name. So when we hear the word, we tag it to be something evil get me, I'm coming on a journey. Then, bara is a Hebrew word, which means create. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you are reading the original manuscript of scriptures in the Hebrew, you see that created is bara. God has that creative power. That power of bara to create. I don't know how many of you are listening to me. God has that power to create. Then the magicians of old, when they assemble, they begin to make incantations. You notice that most witches, if you watch most of these damn movies, they know the way of enchantment, how to mutter and utter words. You know that. They can't function without uttering those words. Those words they utter is what they, okay, the ones the magicians do in the open is the one they call abracadabra. And that word means, I will create as I speak. As I speak, I create. I want to give you the mystery behind such. And in Genesis chapter 1, reading the Greek, the uh, Hebrew manuscript, you see in the beginning God created heaven and earth. And to join together. That's recreation. So that which has been altered in his creative work can be recreated. So God can create. God can recreate. So that word that these magicians use called abracadabra, saying that I will create as I speak. Do you know all their enchantment that they do is done in faith. From their altar, from their coven, from their meetings, they have so much being structured to believe in those things they utter and to believe in the guiding spirit that they function with. So because of the things they have seen in their coven, when they utter, they believe that it happens and it happens for them. I don't know if you are following me. When they mutter a word, they believe it is going to happen. They believe that as they speak, it is created. They believe that as they mutter those words, I don't know the language or whatever, as they mutter it immediately, if, if it means that they disappear, they disappear and, start, and it happens. And then you find Hebrews chapter 1 verses 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power. How does God uphold all things? By the word of his power. You know the earth is standing without the pillar. Eh? It's only standing because the word of God went forth. Upholding all things by the word of his power. When I say uphold, I mean sustain. Everything is sustained by the word of God's power that has been spoken. Ask yourself, why will an almighty in all his 
majesty and power. Speak. That is, not just think about it. Only have it in heart and it is created. No, it did not happen like that. God had it in heart first. And then God went forth and said, let there be and there was. Let there be and there was. You see, creation. Hmm? As God alters the word, it comes into existence in the earth. Realm. As God alters, it comes. I told you something in the beginning of this series on dealing with witchcraft. That Satan's government, his operational system, and most of his movements, he learned structurings, and most of these things from what he saw in heaven. Are we together? And God said, let there be, and there was. Let there be, and there was. And those people in their coven, they will gather something, probably they want to kill someone. And they bring something that they, they call it um, a totem. A totem is like something to represent. For instance, they want to kill someone and they carry an image. And that image, they bring it to the coven. And they bring pins. And they call the name of that person. And so as I call you now, your spirit enters this to them. And as they mutter it, because of that guide, that spirit at work with them, hear me clear? Because of the spirit working with them, as they mutter those words, that thing comes to pass according, as they said, if that individual is not working in light. So it happens that as a summon, and uh, they, they call the name of somebody, uh, let me not call the name of any existing person. Let me call Dragon, dragon. Dragon, dragon, I command you. Appear here and become this image before me. Dragon, dragon. Maybe they call seven times. And as they finish calling, they carry needle. Say, okay, now I want to make you cripple. They begin to pierce the totem. As they are piercing it literally on earth, uh, in the earth realm, where that person is, the person begins to feel like pain. That's like their system of abracadabra. As they speak, they create. The guiding spirit they work with begins to manipulate, begins to navigate that person's spirit into that image. That as they tie it, the person becomes tied in reality. The person becomes tied in reality. And they cannot do those things without muttering those words in faith. This is where I'm talking about legislating authority. A believer cannot have the potency to prevail over witchcraft without knowing how to legislate. How to make decrees. How to utter spoken words in faith. I know it may be coming so simple, but if you have the sermon, you should know where I'm heading. This is, I, I've just given you a tip concerning the priesthood of witchcraft. Witchcraft has a very valid priesthood. And hear me, when I talked about those six components of priesthood, the last I mentioned was consistency in the spirit. And witches happen to be very consistent. There is no day they will not engage their all night meeting. Because they know that anytime they miss their meetings, potency begins to reduce. Potency begins to reduce. No witch can be powerful without attending meetings and conferences. They attend these things to become more formidable. That's why in every 24 hours, they must have a gathering. In that gathering, in that consistency, they are more renewed by that spirit they operate with. So, that's why the believer, the child of God that wants to have an edge against and over witchcraft cannot prevail over witchcraft if he does not have the altar that is the place of meeting with God and consistency with that spirit of the altar. Paul writes into the church in Corinth. He said, and, uh, and as we behold us in a glass, we are changed into that very image. From one level of glory to another. As you keep beholding, you keep getting changed. Whenever you appear before God in a secret place, an impartation comes to your spirit. Literally. I'm not talking of spiritual experience. Literally. If I open this Bible, and I meditate on this Bible, just one chapter, one chapter, my head, my forehead, 
I'll begin to feel heat in my forehead. If I stay 24 hours and not reading this, it will be as though they are, I'll be feeling some pinches on my forehead. See, this is where God deposited the anointing upon me. Literally, if I journey in the scriptures, like five chapters, the oil will be coming hot on my head and I'll be feeling it literally as I'm talking to you. Then if I finish praying, spending time in prayer and studying, it will be like a garment over my body. I'll be feeling it literally. This, this is not spiritual enough. From the spirit, it translates to the um, physical. That is as a result of my coming before him. Now, when the witch goes before their covenant, as they go, that spirit they are servicing gives them fresh empowerment, fresh anointings. You know, witchcraft has its own level of anointing. I talk about covenant in dealing with witchcraft. Witchcraft doesn't joke with covenant. That's why you see them feast on flesh and blood. So you see them eat human flesh. And this thing sustains the life in them. It sustains the darkness in them. So these six components I mentioned, they are all summarized in the word priesthood. 